Hi guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Today we're doing a bit of a video on a really simple project and I'm going to show you how to avoid some waste and get better value out of things. We bought this um, LED strip light from a local hardware store. It's, uh, it was a five meter length and it comes in a spool and you get um, a little power pack and it has an inline switch. And you basically use what you want off the spool and there's points which you can cut it off. And what they say is basically to cut the lead strip at the marked indicator, a marked location, and dispose of the unwanted strip length. What a waste that is. Now, you do only get one power pack, but we had a job. Christine wanted some LED lights in her sewing room under a shelf. And we'll go and have a look at that right now. And here we go in Christine's very bright and colourful sewing room. Now you can see that shelf over that side. We've um, stuck the strip lights underneath. They uh, have a little self-adhesive strip along the back. We've hung the switch up under there and the power goes underneath the bench to the power cord, to the power point. So it solved the problem beautifully. She's got some nice light there. She doesn't know I've come in here, so it's probably not as neat as she would have liked. But um, it worked really well. But remember, we had a five metre roll. It seemed to be the best value to buy the five metres. And this shelf length was only about two metres. So we didn't even quite use half of it. And uh, rather than throw the rest away, I thought, well, I'll put some in my little room. So we'll go and have a look at that. And here we are back in my little workshop. And I'm still trying to set this place up. I've got sort of projects on the go and I'm still building shelves and that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's a work in progress, this room. But you can see that I've added some street lights under that shelf to give me really good light on that workbench. And that shelf is about 2.2 oh, meters long. So we're still left with 0.8 of a meter, about 80 centimeters of this uh, LED lighting. So again, I don't want to throw that out. So I'll show you how we can use that. And I actually did that with this one because as I said, you only get one power pack in, in these kits. So let's show you how we can use the last 80 centimeters and we'll wire up a power point, show you a bit of basic, uh, sorry, we'll wire up a power pack. We'll show you a bit of basic soldering, um, how to do the job. And you know, this isn't overly technical. It's just a lot of my subscribers on my channel here. We're interested in not having wastage. So I'm not sort of promoting a highly technical electronics channel, just basic repairs. So I'll show you what I did and um, we'll be able to use that last 80 centimeters as well for somewhere. Okay, well, we're gonna need a power pack. And the first thing to note is that these little lights run off 12 volts and it actually says it just I don't know if you can read that just along the edge of that thing it says 12 volts and it gives us a plus positive and a negative side and all those copper pad points are where you can actually cut this strip so what we're going to need to do is access those copper pads there and they're under a, a sort of a a gel type rubbery I guess it seals it from moisture so we'll peel back the end section there we'll get a dobber solder on each of those copper pads and I've grabbed a power pack we know it's 12 volts I've grabbed a power pack this is of an old modem I think net gear it came in the e-waste anyway I get lots of power packs and I usually test them and as long as they test out fine and there's no damage I actually sell them in the shop for five bucks there's always people looking for power packs and this one, as we can see there, it's 12, volt, 12 volts output uh, at one amp. So I doubt this will draw any more than an amp. It'll be probably substantially less. But what we'll do is we'll get the pads accessible and we'll power it up with a, uh, a power supply in my workshop and we'll see what current it actually draws just to make sure that that power pack is going to be able to do the job. Okay, we'll try and carefully peel this rubber stuff off so we can access the copper pads it's fairly rigid stuff and I did read on the little packet that these strip lights are actually waterproof and weatherproof to a degree but 
the power pack isn't. So that shouldn't be outside, but you could actually have these strip lights outside. Okay, we've finally got through that rubbery stuff and we can access those copper pads. So we'll heat the soldering iron up and we'll put a bit of solder on them. Okay, let's get a bit of solder on these little copper pads. Here we go, that's taken nicely. So the next step is just to double check how much current these little LED strip lights draw. It won't be very much and I'd be quite confident in a one amp power supply handling it. So I've got a DC power supply here, variable supply, and it will tell me the current that it's drawing, which is handy. So a couple of test leads here. We know that the reds are positive and we know that the top sides are positive. And we'll hook up the negative. And we should have lights. There we go. Works beautifully. And that's drawing, oh, look, point, say about 0 0.3, about 300 milliamps. So no problems at all. Our little Netgear power supply will be able to handle it beautifully. The um, When I did the other one under my shelf here, uh, that was about two meters, a bit over two meters, and I think that was drawing about 750 milliamps, and I did use a two amp power supply for that one. But since this last little bit's only about 80 centimeters, it's not drawing very much current. So I'd set it at around 12 volts, and we can even drop that little back a little bit. So 12 volts there, and yeah, 270 milliamps, so no problems at all. So now that we know that, we can get our power supply ready to join up to it. Now we won't have an inline switch, but that's not so much of a problem uh, because I'll be plugging into a power board somewhere with a switch on it. So we'll prepare the power supply now and show you how to join it up. So we don't need the plug anymore, so we can snip that off. And the wires. Now, usually the one with the solid white line is the positive, but we'll check that just to be sure. So if we just snip down the middle here, we'll, we'll allow us to peel it apart a bit. And I'll get my wire strippers and we'll strip back the wires. And uh, we'll need to tin the wires and I'll show you what tinning means and how to do it next. So I've just stripped the wires. I haven't taken a lot of insulation off and I've given them a bit of a twist because most wires are multi-strand. And it's always a good idea to twist them so you don't have any odd strands that can short anywhere or, or don't result in a neat connection. The next stage is to tin the wires. Now, tinning means coating it with solder. Basically, you heat the wire up with a soldering iron, and if the wire is nice and clean, it will soak the solder up, and that will stop any little fibrous wires poking out, and it'll make it a lot easier to join up to our solder tabs. So to tin the wires, put your soldering iron on the back of the copper and it helps if you have a little bit of solder actually on the tip. And put it on the back of the copper wire until it heats up and then feed a little bit of solder in. And it should soak up into the copper quite well. There we go. Beautiful, nice shiny tip. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Hopefully it's in focus. And now we'll do the other side. You do need to wait until it gets hot enough. And when the temperature is right, the solder will flow. Sometimes you need a bit of flux on some wire. There you go, that's beautiful. Perfect. Now we will test the um, charger just to make sure that we have the right positive and negative sides. Okay, I've just got a basic multimeter here. I've set it to DC voltage uh, to the 20 volt range and which wire had the solid white, it was that one. So we put that one to the positive, and that one to the negative, I have plugged the charger in, and there we have, so it's reading 15 volts. It's a 12 volt power pack, but there's no load on it, so the voltage is always gonna be a bit higher when there's no load, 
um, as soon as there is any sort of current draw it will drop back to about 12. So we have the wires the right way, we know that the one with the solid white line is the positive, so now we can solder them up to our LED strip. Now before I start soldering and connecting wires we're going to put some heat shrink tubing over this section and then I've got some smaller heat shrink to put over the other wires. Now if you don't know what heat shrink tubing is, it's like a little um, sleeve of plastic and when you apply heat to it it shrinks to about half its size and it's fantastic for sealing joins, uh, it keeps them neat stops moisture getting in and it stops the wire, any possibility of a, of a join actually shorting out. So we'll put the black, black's traditionally negative, we'll put that on the negative side. Unfortunately I don't have any heat shrink that's actually, this size is actually red, so we're going to use blue. So we'll start, slide blue onto the other one. Obviously you need to put these on first. Uh, because once it's soldered together, you'll never get them on. Okay, so there we go. We're right to solder that up to the end of the LED strip, making sure that we have the right um, polarity, and then we'll just finish off by using um, shrinking the heat shrink tubing down, and we'll give it a test. And now that we've got the wires tinned and the tab um, tinned, it's just a matter of applying a bit of heat and we'll have a really good instant join. Um, solder melts very easily. Oh, we've still got the power on. That's a bit of a mistake. Not that 12 volts is going to be a problem, but um, we shouldn't have done that. But it shows us that it's all going to work fine. There we go. Soldered up properly. So now I can slip the heat shrink over those joins there. Doesn't go quite over the joint of course, but that's what the larger sleeve is for. And we'll just apply some heat to that. And you can see that sleeve just shrinking, shrinking down. It's amazing stuff this. And we'll slide the last bit down, which will cover the join nice and neatly. And then we just need a bit more heat. So we'll just apply some heat to that. There we go, all good. Nice and neat, pretty much watertight, no chance of any shorts. And if we turn the switch on at the power pack again, we have lights. Beautiful. Now I just need to work out where I'm going to put this little strip. But the good thing is that we've saved wastage, we've used a power pack that was essentially e-waste as well, and our last little strip of LED lights can go under a shelf somewhere to give us some more light in the workshop. Very good. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you got a little bit out of this. Like I said, it's just basics, but it all show, goes to show that with a bit of thought we can use a lot more stuff than what people usually do. They use what they want and throw the rest out. We've um, used some waste materials, basically, for a bit more light somewhere else. Thank you. Catch you in the next video. Bye.